In continuation, today we will give you some updates on U.S. immigration. Watch the full video to know these updates. This is as a sudden feature of the questions to see how best you can help you out your process. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Let's get into the video. Update number one, NVC new wait times. The National Visa Center is part of the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Consular Affairs. NVC serves a clerical function in processing immigrant visa applications. After receiving an approved immigrant petition from U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, NVC works with you on your visa application package. The first step in this process is the creation of your case in their system. Once this is complete, they will send you a welcome letter by email or physical mail. With the information in this letter, you can log in to their Consular Electronic Application Center to check your status, receive messages, and manage your case. Once you submit your fees, forms, and supporting documents to NVC, they will review your case to ensure you provided all the documentation required to schedule the immigrant visa interview. Interviews are based on the availability of appointments offered at the embassy or consulate. The time it takes the NVC to process your case is mostly determined by whether you have paid all of the requisite fees and completed all of the necessary papers. The longer you wait to submit these documents, the longer the NVC will take to review your case. Let's know the current case file creation time at NVC. After the USCIS approves your I-797, your case will be sent to the National Visa Center for processing. At NVC, they will create your visa case and enter the data from your petition into the system. After creating your case, they will send you instructions for processing, as well as a welcome letter that includes your case number and invoice ID. Currency NVC takes 21 days to create a new case. As of September 12, 2022, they are working on cases that were received from USCIS on the 22nd of August 2022. Let's know the current case review time at NVC. Before the National Visa Center reviews your case, you must pay all fees and submit all required documents, such as, the petitioner's affidavit of support, supporting financial documents, applicant's DS-260, and applicant's civil documents. Required documents vary based on petition type. The current case review time is 68 days. As of September 12, 2022, they are reviewing documents submitted to them on 6 July 2022. Current Public Inquiry Form Response Time by NVC Currently, NVC takes 62 days to respond to any inquiry. As of September 12, 2022, they are responding to inquiries received on 12 July 2022. They ask that you make a subsequent inquiry only if you do not receive a response to your email within their published timeframe above. Duplicate inquiries slow their ability to respond to you in a timely manner. Update number 2. Retrogression in Immigrant Visa. According to the Visa Bulletin, the rapid forward movement of the EB2 India cutoff dates during the fiscal year 2022, which was undertaken in an effort to reach the historically high fiscal year 2022 employment-based limit of 281,507 immigrant visa numbers, resulted in heavy applicant demand in the EB2 India category. That high demand, coupled with projected significantly lower visa number availability in the fiscal year 2023, necessitated a significant retrogression in the EB2 India category in order to avoid exceeding the annual numerical limits. The State Department also reported heavy demand in the China EB-5 unreserved category, particularly for immigrant visa issuances in the U.S. Consulates abroad, and increased demand in the India EB-5 unreserved category. This increase in demand, along with the lower number of employment-based visas expected to be available in the fiscal year 2023, required significant retrogression in the China EB-5 unreserved category, an imposition of a final action cutoff date for the previously current India EB-5 unreserved category. Update number 3. DHS unveils final public charge rule. The Department of Homeland Security released its final version of the public charge rule, part of ongoing efforts to dismantle a Trump-era policy that immigrant and civil rights advocates widely decried as a discriminatory wealth test for green card and visa applicants. The final rule formalizes long-standing guidance within DHS that immigration officers use to decide whether an applicant is likely at any time to become a public charge. That guidance, which has been in place since 1999, defined a public charge as someone who is primarily dependent on the government for subsistence, which was evidenced by either the use of public cash assistance to supplement the applicant's income or the institutionalization of the applicant for long-term care at government expense. The rule is scheduled to take effect on December 23, 2022. Update number 4. Status of allocations of immigrant visa for fiscal year 2022. 
With only three weeks left in fiscal year 2022, it is believed that USCIS has used nearly all available employment-based immigrant visa numbers for the fiscal year. Based on information from a recent USCIS court filing, it appears that numbers may have been exhausted in the EB-1 and EB-2 categories and that the EB-3 category may reach its annual limit for the fiscal year 2022 soon. The State Department is expected to make an official announcement in the coming days. In past years when an immigrant visa classification became unavailable toward the end of a fiscal year, USCIS would continue to accept adjustment of status filings that were current under that month's visa bulletin, and cases would be held in abeyance until visa numbers again became available on October 1st, at the start of the new fiscal year. Update number 5. Biden administration ends humanitarian parole for Afghan refugees. Beginning October 1, 2022, Afghan nationals will no longer be able to enter the U.S. using the humanitarian parole process, marking a significant change in the U.S. government's approach to resettlement of Afghan evacuees following the collapse of the Afghan government and takeover by the Taliban in August 2021. Prior to this change, Afghan evacuees were typically admitted to the U.S. through a process known as parole. Of the approximately 86,000 Afghans who have been resettled in the U.S. since August 2021, roughly 90% were admitted via parole. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services clarified that the shift away from the use of parole will not impact applications that have already been filed. The government's main focus in the future will be to resettle three groups of Afghan evacuees, those who qualify for permanent residence under specific immigration programs, immediate relatives of U.S. citizens, residents, and Afghans already in the U.S., special immigrant visa holders, and the most vulnerable refugee applicants. Update number 6. DACA program frozen in time, Dreamers await court ruling. In late August the Biden administration released the final version of a rule to codify and fortify the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, program in an attempt to protect the program and its recipients from ongoing legal threats. DACA protects people who were brought to the country as children without legal status, or who later fell out of legal status, by granting them work authorization, protecting them from deportation, and in some cases allowing them travel permits. Dreamers, as DACA recipients are frequently called, have long been a symbol of immigrant youth. In reality, however, many Dreamers are now transitioning into middle age and have families of their own. In fact, the overwhelming majority of the country's undocumented high school graduates will be ineligible for DACA when they graduate because they entered the U.S. after the program's required arrival date of June 15, 2007. The new DACA regulation largely mirrors the program as it was created in 2012, which included the requirement that a DACA applicant has been present in the country prior to 2007. This date has never been updated, even when the Department of Homeland Security released the final rule last month. It means, for example, that someone turning 16 who has lived most of their life in the U.S. is still shut out of the program. The Biden administration moved to codify DACA because the program remains in legal peril, due in part to the manner in which it was created. After the state of Texas and others sued the government to stop the program, a federal judge in Texas ruled in July 2021 that DACA was illegal and barred new applications to the program, though current recipients could continue to renew their DACA grants. Specifically, the U.S. District Judge Andrew Hannon found that DACA was unlawful in part because it was created by a memorandum written by the former DHS Secretary, Janet Napolitano, and not created by the formal agency rulemaking process, which requires public notice and comment. The Biden administration appealed Judge Hannon's ruling to the Fifth Circuit, which hears appeals from the federal district courts in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. The three-judge panel heard oral arguments on July 6, 2022, and appeared unconvinced by the government's arguments in favor of the DACA program's legality. The case is still being reviewed, but many immigration advocates fear the appeals court will rule against the program. And beyond the concrete harms to Dreamers if that should happen, such as loss of work authorization and protection from deportation, the protracted legal battle surrounding DACA has taken a toll. DACA recipients reported a drop in feelings of integration and inclusion in the U.S. of 15% from 2020 to 2021. In the meantime, and regardless of the rule's publication, there is still a chance that the DACA rule might not take effect. The final rule is scheduled to take effect on October 31, 2022, but only if it does not itself become the subject of a lawsuit. I hope you guys found this video extremely helpful. If you know anybody that could benefit from this information, definitely make sure to share this video with them.
we are all about empowering you with knowledge so the more people that can benefit from this video the more people we want watching this video if you like this video please make sure to hit that thumbs icon thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit on the notification bell for more immigration updates bye